Hey, good morning everyone. I hope you all had an amazing weekend. Um, it's a Monday, so I figured we'd start off with something that uh, we could all use, and that's how to deal with some adversity, huh? So let's jump into God's Word. We're in uh, 1 Peter, 1 Peter uh, 1, 13 through 19. We're going to kind of walk through this a little bit, and I'll talk about it as we do. So it says in 13, so be prepared, so prepare your mind for action and exercise self-control. Self-control. It's Monday, people. I know you guys are uh, probably just getting a little bit of coffee in you, and you're getting ready to go out, and you had a great weekend, and you just don't want to be doing this right now. So uh, let's exercise some self-control this morning. It says, put all your hope in the grace of salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Put all of your hope in the gracious salvation. Put all your hope in Jesus, that he will return someday. This is not our home, that we're going to survive this world, that it may not be easy, that it's hard some days, but we'll survive, you know? So let's, uh, let's be gracious knowing that. Let's have some self-control. It says, so you must live as God's obedient children. Do not slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires, your own desires. Don't we all do that? Every one of us? We start to try to satisfy ourselves. We, we start to put God on the back burner because we're worried about what we want and what we need. And it says here, let's not slip back into those ways. It says you didn't uh, know any better then. So back in the day when we used to do that and we used to hang out and be a little crazy and, and uh, just live for ourselves, we didn't know any better then. We know better now. So let's be obedient children of God. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you, chose you is holy. For the scripture says you must be holy because I am holy. It goes on to say, and remember that the heavenly father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. Our temporary residents in a place that it's not our home. And right now we are being tested to uh, a degree that I don't think any of us have been tested before. I know on Sunday I started to set up some things for us to remember what Jesus stood for and what he didn't stand for. I talked about uh, what Jesus really wants you to know right now. It's adverse times in an adverse setting. And we need to become united as one together, uh, band together as brothers and sisters in Christ and show the world it's something different, right? It says, for you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. We all inherited this empty life, this shell, this, this uh, almost, we were almost duped, right? into thinking that, that if we live for ourselves and try to, to live inside this world, that we would be happy. And it says here, it says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from your empty life you inherited from your ancestors. God paid a price with his son Jesus to ransom you so that we could live different, be different, have grace, have hope, be something other than what the world really fixates on. And it was paid not with mere gold or silver, which it loses their value, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. You know, these are troubling times and they're trying times and they're times when we could all pull apart. And that's kind of why I'm doing this little bit of, uh, these little two-parter series that I'm doing is because I feel like we're getting ripped apart from the inside out because Satan is being divisive with us. And, and I read this this morning, I want to read it. It says, when things get difficult, we should be aware of how we are being subtly drawn away from God's work. When things get difficult, and they're difficult, we start to pull away from what God wants us to do. We start to separate from the family. We start to pull away from the herd, right? It says, if we can stay focused on Christ, we can stay focused on God's purpose. And we do that together. We will find the ability to lead uh, any motley crew toward uh, redemption. There's a motley crew out there and we're a motley crew in here. We need to lead. 
not follow. Let's not follow the world, let's lead. Grab your coffee. Get out there and lead today, amen? Not at work, but in your faith. Lead. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. God, thank you so much for these people down this land. Father, there's times like this that we need to band together as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can lead any motley crew, right, that comes our way. And we lead in faith, by faith. I'm not talking about leading at work. I'm talking about leading the charge, Father, to save a world that is in desperate need of Jesus. So God, don't let, this, let these adverse times rip us apart. Let us hold tight to you. Father, keep us safe. Father, keep us always looking toward you. Don't let this adversity uh, change our course. Let us stay obedient to you. God, I'm praying for these people as they go out into the world today. Father, we love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.